All right, so just got off work. We are heading to the game store right now. We're gonna get my pre-ordered copy of Morta Kanan and Morta, Morta, whatever, that new D&D book that just came out. And I'm gonna give you my first impressions and then we're gonna give away a copy of it. So let's get to it. Let's do this. That clap sucked. Oh, whoops, wrong outfit. Yeah, that looks better. All right, so first, they don't plan for this stuff, do they? First, we're gonna take a look at this, kind of my first impressions of this bad boy, and then I'm gonna tell you about the giveaway and how you can get your own copy. All right, so I'm kind of looking at this bad boy here and I'm gonna try to put this cover up here. You can kind of see the cover a little bit here. This is the alternate cover that they have. This is, it's like focusing on the dude's face. That's awesome. So this is like freaking sweet. I love this artwork, absolutely love it. This is freaking awesome. Uh, you can see here, here's the back of it. This is super cool. So definitely love the cover. This is freaking sweet cover. Now, I do want to mention, before I start getting into this thing here, that I just got this today. I literally got this probably about an hour ago, drove home and started getting my crap set up to do the shoot. And so I have not had a chance to review this at all. I have not read a bit of it at all. And I, this is gonna be a first look, a first impressions type of thing. This is not an in-depth review. I'm just gonna look through it, I'm gonna peruse through it, and I'm gonna tell you what I think off the top of my head. That's what this is gonna be. So, there you go, you've been warned. All right, let's get into this sucker right here. I got it opened up. Here is the first page. Morden Kanan and, and Tomb of Foes. All right, sweet. So uh, first thing we're gonna look at is the disclaimer because I am told that people like the disclaimer. <clears throat> disclaimer, we asked Morden Kanan to write a humorous disclaimer for this book. And we got this response. The day I start writing frivolous disclaimers for game manuals, particularly one riddled with text stolen from my notes is the day I retire from wizardry and abandon all self-respect. Well, that seems kind of harsh, but okay. Um, so that's, uh, it's pretty short as disclaimers go. Um, boom, boom, boom. Table of contents. All right. Uh, a reading from the table of contents. Preface. Okay. There's a preface in there. That's good to know. Chapter one, the blood war. Chapter two, elves. Chapter three, dwarves and dwerger. Chapter four, gith and their endless War, Halflings and Gnomes, Beastiery, uh, Appendix, Monsterless. And you guys can see here that we have an index of monster stat blocks and they're alphabetically arranged, which is awesome. You're able to find what you want alphabetically. This was one of my major grabs with Volos. It was hard to find things alphabetically. So I'm, I'm very, very happy to see this. That is really cool. All right, let's check out the preface here. All right, nice. Yeah, about this book, standard preface stuff, um, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna read it to you. That would be a waste of our time. Um, chapter one, the blood war. Okay, so blood war, blood war. Ah, cool, I know exactly what this is. So this is, I was actually reading like Fiend Foley or something like that not too long ago, and it talks about the blood war, which is basically an eternal battle between the demons and the devils. And it is really cool and interesting. Um, so we got some information, probably some background about the Blood War, I would imagine. Um, and we're already getting into some of the artwork here, as you can see, which looks pretty sweet, I think. Some flags here, Legions of the Damned Sailing the Sticks. Okay, interesting. So maybe there's some information about the sticks, which would be very helpful if anybody's ever going to travel to the Abyss or the Nine Hells. The Devilish Point of View. Uh, Lords of the Nine! Oh, nice. So, so the Nine... 
levels or the nine layers, what do they call it? Yeah, the nine layers or the nine hells is what they call that sucker. And so Lords of the Nine is Asmodeus. He's the leader. He's the ninth layer, the leader of the entire nine hells. Um, Zeriel, blah, 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 blah. It looks like we're basically going through Mammon, Fierna, and Belial or something like that. Levist, I'm going to mispronounce lots of names in here. I'm just going to give you a forewarning about that. It looks like we're really just marching through information about the nine lords or the nine rulers of the nine hells, which is Mephistopheles. See, I told you, I can't speak English. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Information about it. That's really cool. Oh, here's cool little artwork. Ah, ooh, diabolical cults. This is cool. So I'm immediately starting to think here that we have the opportunity to, you know, um, have some cults on like the prime material plane or whatever who are worshiping one of these demons or one of these devils, uh, diabolical. So this would be, uh, I don't know, devils, whatever. And you have these cults and they're worshiping them. And here's some information you can use to put on top of just normal NPCs or um, monsters or whatever to make them, it gives, you know, it has goals, signature spells, stuff like that. So that looks really sweet. I like that. You can, you can build a campaign around that sort of idea right there. Cults and then eventually toward the end of it, you would fight a devil or something like that. Um, that would be freaking sweet. Um, I, 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 if they have stat blocks on the devils, that would be really cool. We'll, we will check that out in just a little bit. Um, Infernal Cambians, ooh, interesting. Cambians, ooh, those are cool. So a Cambian is the offspring of a succubus and a mortal, if I'm not mistaken. So this has some information about that. Tiefling subraces, <gasps> no way. So there are, depending upon the Lord of the Nine Hells or something that you're related to or have to do with, there is a tiefling subrace. So that sounds really cool. I like that idea. Devil customization tables, sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, here we go, Princes of the Abyss. And so we're doing the exact same thing. It looks like they are, yep, they sure are. Mephomet, Demogorgon, ah, uh, Demogorgon. Okay, so obviously, so Wizards was like, dude, uh, Stranger Things has made Demogorgon, fam Demogorgon famous now, and so we have to include him, her, whatever it is, in something soon, and they did. It's right here. Um, Grast Jube, Jubilex, Orcus, Orcus, we know Orcus, Yenigo. Yenigo is the um, leader of the gnolls, or the godlike figure of the gnolls. That's cool. Zugtamoy. Zugtamoy. Freaking A. I played a game uh, where Zugtamoy was in one of the expansions. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, really hard, but it was pretty fun. Demonic Boons. All right, Demonic Boons. So it looks here like uh, same type of deal. You know, if you're related to, if you have some like relationship with a demon or something like that, um, you would get certain things, ability score adjustments, signature spells. Wicked folk who seek power from demons are scattered across the universe. Some of them gather in cults, but many of them act on their own or in small groups. Interesting. All right, here we got some, some oh, that's just cool. Some like, artwork in here. I like that. Uh, demonic Cambians. There's some, oh, demon customization tables. That is sweet. So I like random tables. I like these types of things because a lot of times I'll like, I'll think of things on my own and I'll make things up in my head, but these are very useful. Sometimes I'll roll them randomly and just go from there and whatever I get is what I get. Other times I'll use this as a starting point to make my own things. So this is really sweet. And fiendish cults, cult goals, cult resources, cult. So random tables to help you def define a cult. So this is useful for sure. All right, here we go. Chapter two, elves. Okay, so I think, you know what? I think I see what they're doing now. A race divided, yes, I know exactly what they're doing. So it looks like they, as they're going through these different races, the demons, the devils, fiendish races, I guess, elves, and I think in the table of contents, we saw dwarves and dwerger, and we saw, well, I don't know how halflings and gnomes would fit into that, but my theory is, is that they're doing a sort of dichotomy of sorts between, among the races or the, the, the types or something. So you got demons and del devils and how they like oppose each other. And then it looks like we're gonna, I, I would wager a guess that we are going to talk about how you know, some history on the elves and how the elves, like, you know, you have the surface elves and the drow and how they oppose each other and stuff. So I'm, we're definitely getting into lore, lots of lore right off the bat here. And 
I don't know, I, I think I've mentioned it in previous videos, but I love lore. Lore is the type of thing that when I read it, it inspires me to run adventures, to create campaigns. Um, that's one of the reasons I love Volos. I mean, Volos has like lots of cool stat blocks and stuff, but it has lore in the very beginning of it that just makes my imagination just run in tons of different ways and really, really, really inspires me. And I mean, so I mean, we saw the table of contents. The, the latter part of this is the beastery. So it looks like we're kind of, there's my phone. We're doing little things similar to Volos here where we're establishing a bunch of lore up front. And then I would presume that like, yeah, it looks like about half of this book is bestiary. So it looks like that's what we're trying to do here. And I like that a lot. Elven Outlook. So I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to start cruising through here a little bit more. Elven Deities, because I don't want this video to be super, super long because nobody will watch it. Um, but I want to get, I want to make sure I hit like important points for you guys. I want to make sure I give you a good idea of what you're going to find here. Eladrin and the Feywild. Eladrin, Eladrin. Okay, so Eladrin, I think, are elves that are native to the Feywild. So it's going to give us some information. Drow, here we go. Drow. So let's get some background, some lore about Drow. That is, if you're running a campaign with Drow in it, that is going to be super useful. Matriarchs. Um, there we go. Slaves and status. Blah, blah, blah. Let's try to, let's try to start picking it up a little bit in here. The Demon Web. Woo, cool. Information about the Demon Web. That is nice. The Raven Queen and Shadar Kai. Awesome. So it's interesting. I know Shadow Kai was in a game I once played. I don't know a whole lot about them. So this will be interesting to read when I have more time. Elf subraces. Um, looks like we got some random tables. There's autumn, winter, spring, summer subrace. Ooh, a ladrin trait. So it looks like there is information here. If you want to play an elf subrace, a different one, there's an Aladrin subrace, a sea elf subrace, a Shadar Kai subrace. That sounds interesting. So apparently Shadar Kai is a subrace of the elves. I didn't know that. So um, that's cool. So there's some there's some stuff in here for players then. If you want to play a different race, um, that's nice. And then some random tables, some adventure story hooks. That looks pretty sweet. All right, cool. We are on to chapter three, Dwarves and Dwerger. So uh, the deep roots of war, um, lore. We have lore again. I mean, that's cool. I love I love lore. Uh, one for all the stronghold, blah, 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 the clan, dwarves of the multiverse. Hill Dwarves, Mountain Dwarves, Gold Dwarves. It talks about Dwarves of Greyhawk, of Forgotten Realms. Dwarven Religion, Dwarven Deities. That is useful information here. Some more cool little art going on here. Um, forging some stuff. Dwarves and Ale. Oh, this is cool. Dwarves have a reputation for being able to consume great quantities of ale. Although drinking plays a significant role in their culture, it is a mistake to assume that intoxication has the same effect on them as it does on humans. So that is cool. Humans drink to forget while dwarves drink to remember. When dwarves drink in a group, this effect spreads among them. What effect? Um, vivid memories and stuff. Anyway, that's that sounds cool. Giants, so it talks about their relationship to other races, perhaps. Orcs and Dwerger. Yep, sure does. Dwarven adventurers. Dwerger. Okay, so information about Dwerger. That is super useful. If you're running a campaign where Dwerger are the enemies, I mean, th that's invaluable to know that sort of information because that helps you build up the details, like the, the depth and richness of the game that you're running for your players. And so that is very, very useful information. Dwerger characters. Here's some information about Dwerger characters. Now, I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I mean, if you want to run, if one of your players wants to be a Dwerger, there's information here on how to do that. I'm pretty sure this was like in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. But, I mean, it would be... I'm not blaming wizards for doing that because if you're going to have a section of lore on Dwerger and you don't include an option to play as a Dwerger, that just would not make a lot of sense to me. So I understand why it's in there. Again, random tables, um, clan status, clan nobility traits. So stuff about your clan, um, special ability, special allies, sorry, of Dwerger. So there you go. Good, solid lore again on dwarves and Dwerger. So I'm liking that. All right. Chapter four, Gith and their endless war. So, um, I mean, this is going to, it's going to be lore again. It's going to be lore. And it's going to tell a story, I'm sure, about how the, 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 I think the original race was the Gith and they were slaves of the Mind Flayers of the Illithids. And at some point there was some hero of legend that freed them or helped to get them free. And then at one point, and then after that, the two races or whatever split, the Gith became the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zarai. Um, and so this is going to tell the story of that. Um, really cool. Oh, here's that silver sword. So one of my players, my players once fought against a bunch of Githyanki, and one of the one of the players ended up with one of these plus three silver great swords. 
and um, she took this thing and she had to leave the group. Unfortunately, she moved away, but I was totally planning on having Githyanki hunt her down to get that sword back. It's too bad we couldn't do that. Uh, Githyanki astral ship. So this is cool. A little artwork. Oh, ooh. astral skiff, astral brig, planar raider. And so this is good information because the Githyanki and probably gets her eye are um, natives to the astral plane, I believe. And so they would have these ships that they would fly around in the astral plane with. So that is cool. Um, I'm going to kind of cruise through here a little bit. Some nice artwork. So the gifts are I, or whatever, how you pronounce them, are like kind of a monkish type thing. Oh, here we go. Gith characters. So here are some character options for players if they want to play a gif in your game. And I'm going to cruise this a second. I don't see anything crazy like magical resistance that would make it overpowered offhand. But again, I'm just glancing at it. So I'm, you know... Because uh, that, that was a complaint. I think it was in Volos. There was one, I think it was the UNT option in Volos for players, and it made, it gave them, like, uh, magical resistance, which I think is super powerful. I don't think that that's something that a player should start out with. I mean, even, the, even, even in the Monster Manual, even as a DM, you only start getting magical resistance in the super high-level bad guys, so I, don't, I didn't like that. Um, but this looked pretty cool. I, and I think that would be very interesting roleplay-wise to have a Gith Yankee or a Gith Zerai in your game. So, yeah, another random tables to help you develop things like bonds, flaws, and traits. So that is really cool. All right, here we go. Chapter 5, Halflings and Gnomes. So this is interesting. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to read it right now, but... Uh, I wonder what the, you know, the what the opposition or whatever they're trying to put um, between the two are, you know, as far as like the, uh, what, what was that word I used before? I forget what that word was. Um, it, was it was a big word. I, I, it only, it only, it only, I only had it once and then once I used it, I forgot it. So um, it's just going to talk about lore. I'm sure it's going to talk about more lore about them. Um, ooh, halfling gods. Cool. And myths. Halfling deities. Yep. Got it. Cool. I don't really know. I'm not familiar with a lot of those. So that would be useful information. Um, that's the type of information, too, that players would probably find helpful as well, I imagine. Um, halfling ideals, bonds, flaws, reasons for adventuring, gnomes, drinking deeply of life. A gnome is really bored and tries to savor every minute, for life is full of opportunities to learn. Cool. Celestial toy makers. All right. Ooh, gnome, tinker gnomes. Tinker gnomes. That sounds cool. I mean, he's, this dude's got, like, you know, soot on his face. Something just blew up in his face, so that's awesome. Animal helpers, deep gnomes, force... Oh, oh, oh I wonder. I, gnome deities. I wonder if there is an option for playing a deep gnome. Like some deep gnome traits. There we go. Here we go. Deep gnome traits. And then here are some... This is a sub-race of a gnome, so if one of your players wants to play a deep gnome, here's some information about how he can do that. So, and then we have random tables again. All right. And now we're on to the grand show. I love lore, but I also love monster stat blocks. It's something that really gets me psyched up as a DM. So, chapter six, Bestiary. This Bestiary provides game statistics and lore for more than a hundred monsters suitable for any D&D campaign, including old favorites from the past, blah, blah, blah. Some stuff from Fiend Folio, published in 1981. That is cool. So we're going to go through this sucker, and I'm not going to, like, pause on every single one because that would take way too long but the ones that jump out at me the ones that i think are really cool i'm gonna talk i'm gonna put i'm gonna talk about them for a little bit because um i love seeing sweet and i have a feeling so they talked about i'm, I'm hoping i'm hoping that because they talked about demons and devils and stuff that we're gonna get stat blocks on demons and devils i will be so stoked you know it's interesting i bet everybody already knows that that stuff's in here because, like, I'm sure Wizards, like, put out previews and people on YouTube have been doing previews of what's going to be in this book. But I'm kind of, I mean, I haven't been paying attention to that stuff. You know what I mean? I've been doing my own thing. And so you guys probably already know what's in here. But I don't. So we're going to find out. And it's going, I'm going to find out. And it's going to be fun. So here we go. <laughs> Astral Dreadnought. Whoa. CR21. That's freaking sweet. Oh, it can sever silver cords. Sweet. Legendary actions. Nice. I like that. Uh, what's this guy? Alep? I don't know what that is. Oh, this looks bad. Oh, I can't use that word. This looks This looks really cool. <laughs> Try to keep this family friendly. Um, Belhanoth. Belhanoth. CR11. Okay, that looks pretty sweet. A Belhanoth lair. Native to the Shadowfell. All right. I've never heard of that before. That looks really cool. 
I mean, cool artwork off the bat. Really cool artwork. I like this totally. Bone claw. Let's, let's, a choker. Oh, a choker. Look at that. Cadaver collector. Oh my gosh. A cadaver collector. That's freaking sweet. <laughs> uh, a choker. All right. I, we, I've heard of chokers before. Clockworks? Okay, interesting. A gnome's efforts to invent and tinker with magic and mechanical. So things that gnomes have created, it looks like. That's sweet. A corpse flower. Awesome. Uh, da -da -da. We're going to try to peruse through here. See if things... Deathlocks. Interesting. Oh, a few different types. I don't know what deathlock is, but... Oh, the forging of a pact between a warlock and a patron is no minor occasion, at least not for a warlock. The consequences of breaking that pact can be dire and in some cases lethal. A warlock who fails to live up to a bargain with an evil patron runs the risk of rising from the dead as a deathlock. A foul undead driven to serve its otherworldly patron from beyond the grave. You guys, if you ever... I mean, this is good for DMs, right? Uh, if you ever have a warlock in your game who breaks his pack with his patron, you know, this could be like, I mean, a villain that comes back to haunt the party or something. This this is cool. Um, nice. The, oh, we got... So we're going into demons now. And we got some different types of demons. CR 11. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on CRs a little bit here because uh, both of my, two of my campaigns right now, Sword Coast Guard and uh, Manus Invictus are really high levels, uh, fairly high levels. And so when I see things that are higher CRs, that's like, woo, toys. Um, so we got some another more demon options here. Really cool. Lots of demons. Molly Dias, Nabasu, um, Okay. Sibriax. Oh, this just looks cool. Thought to be as old as the abyss itself, Sibriaxes haunt remote parts of the plane where they use their vile abilities to breed new horrors and apprehend forbidden lore. That looks fun. CR18. Wow, I think some of my players are going to find one of those. That is cool. Rasterlith. Ooh, ooh, cool. Check this out. This is nice. This looks like an image of Zugatmoy, I think, the fungi queen or whatever. Demon lords often turn against each other. Here, Zugatmoy will soon face the treachery of Jubi, Jubi Blex. Nice. That is cool. <laughs> Good artwork. Really cool artwork here. Um, demon lords. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so, <laughs> Baphomet. Challenge rating 23. Some minotaur. Oh, oh, this is the this is the 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 being that the minotaurs worship. Cool. So he's a demon lord. Awesome. Uh here we go. Here we go. Demogorgon. Demogorgon. CR26. That's cool artwork. That thing looks really nasty. I like that a lot. Um legendary resistances, legendary actions, got a gaze, a beguiling gaze, a hypnotic gaze, an insanity gaze, tentacle attacks. You know, 406 hit points, 22 armor class. <laughs> That's freaking sweet. Magic resistance? Yep, magic resistance. All right. And then he's got some, oh, Feeble Mind. He can cast Feeble Mind. That's the nasty spell. Throw that on like a wizard and he's done. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, here we go. What do we got? Fraz Urblu. Sweet. CR 23, another Demon Lord. We're going to try to cruise through here. I don't want to be here all day. Grazed. Jubilex, just so Jubilex or whatever is the kind of like the godlike deity or the godlike figure, I suppose, of like slimes and oozes. So that's really cool. And you can see here the slimy, oozy type photo. That's good. Uh, legendary. Obviously, all these things are going to have legendary actions. Orcus. Nice. Orcus is the demon prince of undeath, known as the Blood Lord. That is cool. CR 26. Very, very sweet. I mean, I love, I love Savlox for high level things like this. It just makes me want to, wow. Yenagu. So I don't know how to pronounce that, but I know that this is like the, the godlike figure of the gnolls, right? Super, super cool. He's got his three-headed three flail. That's awesome. I love that crap. Uh, here you go. Zugat Moy. Okay, so Zugat Moy, challenge rating 23. Very, very nice. I'll try to cruise through here. Diro, Diro Savant. We're in the Ds. I gotta, I gotta like go a little faster. <gasps> Abishai! <laughs> Hot freaking dog. You know, it's funny, in Sword Coast Guard, like about a couple months ago, I wanted to use um, Abishai, and I went to one of the a second edition book that I have that has Abishai in it, and I was thinking of converting them over to fifth edition, and I didn't do it. I was a little too lazy. It, was a lot, it seemed like a lot of work to me. Um, but now I have Abishai. Freaking A. So Sword Coast Guard... Prepare yourselves for Abishai. 
CR7, CR17, Blue Abishai, CR17, Green Abishai, Red Abishai, CR19, wow, White Abishai, a little bit lower, a little level six, but I mean, a handful of level six CRs will do the trick against a higher level army, uh, especially when you think about action economy and stuff. Hellfire Engine, okay, we gotta get going here, boom, 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 some of these things. Oh, look at this slob, look at this guy, nu Nuperibo. No soul is turned away from the Nine Hells, but the truly worthless, those whose evil acts in life arose from carelessness and sloth more than anything else, are suitable only become Nuberibos. These pitiful creatures shuffle mindlessly across the landscape, blind bloated from unquenchable hunger and groping for whatever scraps of fetid matter or swarming vermin they can scoop into their groaning mouths. That's freaking cool. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Devils, Arch Trio, I mean, here we go, Arch Devils, Bale. I'm just gonna read the names off to you. I mean, they're all like really powerful. cr 19s and stuff. Okay, what is this guy? Geryon, sweet. <laughs> That's a really cool. What is he like? The he's like a he's like a Merolith. Oh, he probably was. He's probably originally like a Merolith or something. Only a male version apparently, that like ascended or something. No, that doesn't make any sense. He's got like de Meroliths are demons, and this is a devil. So never mind, scratch that. But anyway, he looks pretty cool. He's got like a little snake body and a stinger. So, um, who's this? Hutigen, Malak. Oh, that looks sweet. Oh. I, I know this artwork. This is from something or other, an older version of Dungeons and Dragons for sure. Uh, but the, I recognize that. That's pretty cool. Um, more Demon Lords. Titivillus. Nice. I hope I pronounced that right. Zariel. Oh, she looks pretty cool. That's sweet. Oh, Drow. So, Drow. Here we go. Uh, now, there are, I think, about three or four drow already in the Monster Manual. And so how here we have drow arachnomancer. <laughs> arachnomancer, it must be like it rides spiders or raises them or something. We'll see. Uh, drow favored consort. And, oh, look at the CRs on these. CR 13, CR 18. <laughs> That's freaking sweet. Um, drow house captain, CR 9. Drow inquisitor, CR 14. Nice. Drow Matron Mother. CR 20. Whoa, dude, that is sweet. And she's got 262 hit points and an armor class of 17, magical resistance, so she legendary action. So she might actually last more than one or two rounds because usually when, I don't know why they do this, but you know, you have an archmage who's like really powerful and stuff, but he's got like 60 hit points. And so he goes down like that. And it is no challenge to the players to take him out. Drow Shadow Blade. All right, here we go. <laughs> Dwerger. Okay, so we had a bunch of lore on Dwerger, and now we got stat blocks on Dwerger. And right off the bat, I see four of them on this page here. Dwerger Despot, CR12. Dwerger Hammerer. Dwerger Cavalarakarani. Dwerger Mindmaster. Uh, okay, so now the CRs are going down to two, so not quite as high. Dwerger Screamer. Dwerger Soul Blade. Dwerger Stone Guard. CR2, one, three. Dwerger Warlord? Dwerger... Z Holy crap! I mean, you could run, like, a respectable campaign here with this many Dwerger stat blocks or a really long adventure. Um, but this is really cool. I am digging that. Lots of Dwerger options here. Ladrin. Okay, so here are CR10. So some, like, monster stat blocks for a Ladrin if you want to have your players encounter them maybe when they're traveling the Feywild or something like that. So that's really cool. And then... Oh, Elder Elementals. Oh my gosh. This is CR20, CR... The, so the reason I'm kind of geeking out over the Elder Elementals is um, the the Sword Coast Guard right now, one of the, one of the, one of the plot arcs they're going through involves an Elder God. And um, there is kind of, kind of an Elemental-ish, like, uh, bent to things. And so... I am seeing opportunities here for stuff for them to fight. That is cool. Obviously, these are really high level. CR Elder Tempest, CR twenty three, Zeratan, some big earth turtle thing. That's awesome. Ooh, here we go. Elemental Myrmidon. So this is this is from Prince of the Apocalypse. Um, they kind of recycled it a little bit, put it in here. But you know, hey, we have an elemental theme, so I can't blame them for putting this in here. Um, and besides which, not everybody bought Prince of the Apocalypse. And so putting those creatures in here, I mean, yeah. 
as long as as long as they're not like recycling everything from everywhere, I'm not going to fault them a whole lot about that. Um, GIF. Some hippopotamus. It's easy to spot the GIF in a room. A group of seven foot tall hippopotamus headed humanoids attired in gaudy military uniforms with gleaming pistols and muskets on display. These spacefaring mercenaries are renowned for their martial training and their love of explosives. That sounded familiar. Some like, different edition must have had it. it probably a, most of these are from different editions. They've existed beforehand and they were just reskinned for fifth, right? Uh, Gith Yankee. Gith. So Gith Yankee, a um, bunch of different options for them. Gith Zerai gray render so i remember i think it was 3.5 i found the gray render in and i ran like an adventure with some of these and the reason i like and you can see even by the artwork here the gray render looks like and i don't remember the name of it from star wars that thing that luke fought in underneath jabba's palace i don't remember the name of that thing but this looks a lot like that so that's really cool it's a cr12 Ooh, nice howler oh that's from a video game i played i remember, I remember what those were Oh, it's a CR8. Wow. Um, and we got a Marut. A Marut. Nigh unstoppable inevitables serve a singular purpose. They enforce contracts forged in the Hall of Concordance in the city of Sigil. Nice. CR25. Wow. Uh, a Measle. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I think it's from a previous edition. I think, yeah. Um, in places where the Shadowfell washes against the shores of Material Plane dwell measles. Hateful hermits who left behind their old lives to contemplate their misery in shadow. Nice. Nagpa. A Nightwalker. Ooh, a Nightwalker. That looks pretty cool. CR20. That's awesome. What is it? Uh, the Negative Plane. Negative Plane. All right. Oblex. Oblex Spawn. Uh, Godalt Oblex. Elder Oblex. What is an Oblex? Um, by experimenting on the slimes, jellies, and puddings that infest the depths of the Underdark, Mind Flayers created a special breed of ooze, the Oblex, a slime capable of assaulting the minds of other creatures. That sounds sweet. <laughs> and, and my Manus Invictus group right now is fighting Beholders. Not Beholders. Um, fighting Mind Flayers. So there is a chance that some of these might make their way into the meteorite where they currently are. Just throwing that out there. Ogres, some different options for ogres. That is good to see. Um, Frost Salamander. Woo! Shadow Kai. Nice. Awesome. So some stat blocks for Shadow Kai to fight them. Uh, it looks like you only got one, two, um, no, maybe maybe about four or so. Ooh, nice. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm not sure what this is, but it's pretty cool artwork. I mean, you got bone. What does it say? Here, this will probably tell me. Uh, in the Shadowfell and elsewhere in the multiverse, the curse of undeath threatens to overwhelm all life. Cool. So maybe undeath in the Shadowfell. But that looks really good. Really good artwork here. Um, oh, <laughs> Sorrow Sworn. I don't know what this is. The Shadowfell's pervasive melancholy sometimes gives rise to strange incarnations of the plane's bleak nature. The Sorrow Sworn embody the forms of suffering that are inherent to the shadowy landscape, and they visit horror on those who stumble into their midst. The Angry. <laughs> the hungry, the lonely, the lost, and the wretched. All right. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Uh, the CRs are pretty wildly vary, but that's pretty sweet. Star spawn. I'm getting any S's. I must be pretty close to getting through all this. Um, elder, elder evils? What the heck is that? Exactly who or what the elder evils are remains in dispute among the rare sources of knowledge about them. Okay, all right, I'm, I don't have time to read all this, but that, ooh, a steeter? What the heck is that? Giant hunting spiders, steeters prowl the depths of the Underdark. Most steeters are encountered in the company of Dwerger. Ah, uh, so if you're running a Dwerger campaign, they now have mounts. They are giant spiders. That's freaking sweet. All right, I think I'm repeated that phrase, freaking sweet, lots of times in the video. Sorry, this is like a, this is like an impromptu thing here. I'm not scripting this stuff. A sword wrath. Trolls. Oh, more options for a dire troll. This looks cool. Trolls kill and eat almost anything, including, in rare cases, other trolls. This cannibalism has the effect of causing the troll to grow to an unusually large size. These dire trolls uh, crave more and more troll flesh to fuel their continued growth. Blah, 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 blah. So it sounds like they graft parts of other trolls onto them. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. Um, rot troll, spirit troll, venom troll. Nice. Yugoloths. Okay, some more. Oh, vampiric mist. That looks cool. 
some Yugoloth options. I mean, there are already a respectable amount of Yugoloth options, I believe, in the Monster Manual. So expanding upon that is cool. It gives you more fuel for the flames. Ooh, Marinoloth on a skiff with a pole. Ooh, hey, I bet these guys are the things that... Yeah, the River Styx. They're the Grim Gaunt Captains of the Fairies on the River Styx. I did not see stat blocks for Charon, who is like the, the ruler over all of these dudes, I believe, and runs the River Styx as well, um, which is unfortunate because um, actually, oh, you know what? My Madison Victus group found, encountered Charon, Charon, or however you want to pronounce his name, and they almost fought him. <laughs> I, I made up my own stat block for him, but it would be cool to have it in here too. Um, here we go, and we're at the end of it. Um, so let's just take a look here. Uh, we got the appendix we are on now. Monster list. Stat blocks by creature type. Useful. Stat blocks by challenge rating. Creatures by environment. Good, good, good. So there we go. And we are at the end of the book. So bam. We got through it all. All right. So my other, off the cuff here, my impressions of this are, I mean, I definitely like this. I, I love lore. And I love monster stat blocks, and so this is this is like Volos. This is basically Volos number two, only they're obviously they're being more creative than just saying Monster Manual one, Monster Manual two, Monster Manual three. Um, so this is really sweet, though. I love the lore. I guess I love the lore. I love the monster stat blocks. I love too that they are giving you expanded options for certain races, such as the Drow, the Dwerger, um, and some of the other ones in there. More demons, more Yugoloths. So it's very cool to have more stat blocks for the same type of creature because that allows you to build out a campaign. And, you know, they did the same thing in Volos too. You had orcs and stuff in there. So that is very sweet. Um, overall, I think this is awesome. I did not see a lot of recycling from other Wizards material. There was a couple bits of it, but not a whole lot. So that's really cool. Um, there is, there, the only, my, my only small little gripe is I kind of don't like seeing material that players would use interspersed with material that dungeon masters would use. Um, but this mostly seems like a book for dungeon masters for sure. Um, the lore and for monsters and stuff, and also all the stat blocks for monsters. Um, there is some lore that I think would be useful for players, though, who are role-playing. The elves, the halflings, the gnomes. So I could definitely see players getting use out of this as well. Um, and I also see, I mean, obviously there are, like, the options for, like, sub-races, like a sea elf. And then if you want to be a dwerger, there are those options in here as well. And so I can see that being useful in that regard for players as well. Um... So yeah, I think this is a book probably for both players and DMs. However, I I I, I mean I see everything through the lens of a DM because I am a DM. I'm I, I'm very rarely a player. So for me though, this seems like if you're a DM, this is an awesome book. I get this book, really really cool. All right, now let's get down to brass tacks and talk about how you can win your own copy of Mordekainen's or whatever. Tomb of Foes. Disclaimer here, I'm gonna be giving away a copy of this, but this one is mine, sorry. Um, I love this cover, it is totally cool. The one that I'm gonna be giving away is the normal cover, um, so just to be totally upfront about that, but let's talk about what you gotta do to get this bad boy. I mean, the cover the cover is different, right? But like inside the book is still the same. All right, so first thing is that the giveaway is going to start as this video comes out, obviously, and I'm gonna end it once I hit 1,000 subscribers, no, let me, let me change that. I'm going to end it one week after I hit 1,000 subscribers. So do your thing, tell your friends, share this video, whatever. So the faster I get to 1,000 subs, the faster somebody gets a free book. And the way you're gonna tell if this giveaway has ended or if it's still open is I'm gonna pin a comment down below that indicates the status. And I'm also gonna update the description to tell you whether it is open or closed. So if you landed on this video and I already have a thousand subs, but the comment and the description indicate that it's still open, you can still win. Okay, right, so what do you gotta do? There is a link down below in the description and probably also gonna put a link in the comment, uh, like a pinned comment, to Gleam. That's the site that I'm using to run the giveaway. So when you click that link over to Gleam, I think like a little pop-up or something is going to appear and it's basically going to show you the different things that you need to do, or 
I should say, the different things that you can do to earn entries in the giveaway. The way it works basically is the more things that you do in that list, the more entries that you earn. And obviously the more entries you earn in the giveaway, the greater your chances of winning the book. That's, that's how that works. Also, please be sure to enter a valid email address because that's how I'm going to contact you if you won. And you're gonna have to trust me on this one. I'm not going to spam you with email or some stupid stuff like that. I mean, I'm trying to make friends, not lose them because I have no friends. And there are like official rules for the giveaway that you're gonna be able to find down in that link and over in the description and stuff like that. Actually, the description contains like a shorter version of the official rules and the entire list of the official rules is going to be found over on the Gleam site. So please make sure you read those. Um, there is some important information there that I don't want you to miss out on. All right, I think that's all that I needed to mention about the giveaway and how it works. However, if I missed something or if something doesn't make sense or something is confusing, please let me know down in the comments and I will try to clear things up. And if there's anything additional that I need to let you guys know about that I forgot to record in the video, because this is the first giveaway that I'm doing on YouTube, then I will update the comment and the description to let you know any additional information that I might have overlooked. All right, good luck, and until next time, let's play D&D.